BBC News. The United States has called on China to use its influence with Russia to discourage it from invading Ukraine. A U.S. State Department official, Victoria Nuland, said any conflict in Ukraine would also affect China. Burkina Faso's new military leader, Lieutenant Colonel Paul Henri Damiba, has addressed the nation for the first time since seizing power on Monday. Colonel Damiba promised to return to the normal constitutional order within what he called a reasonable time frame. President Biden has confirmed that he will make an African-American woman his first nomination to the Supreme Court. He said the person chosen would be what he called an historic candidate. The first female president of Honduras, Yamara Castro, has been sworn in at a ceremony in the National Stadium. In her inauguration speech, the left-wing politician said she'd inherited a broken country, but promised to work hard to implement social justice and transparency. The Court of Appeal in the United States has overturned the conviction of two former traders for rigging the LIBOR interest rate, once among the world's most important financial benchmarks. The U.S. judge found that their conduct was not against the rules. The U.N. says renewed tribal violence in the Sudanese region of Darfur has led to loss of lives and displaced more than 15,000 people over the last week. It says a personal dispute between two men from the Masalit tribe and an Arab nomadic group sparked the conflict near the city of Al Janaina. Morocco has said it will reopen its airspace to international passenger flights on February the 7th. The North African country banned all incoming and outgoing international flights last November to try and limit the spread of the Omicron variant of coronavirus. BBC News.